वेलकम एवरी वन इन टूडेज क्लस वी आर टकिंग अबाउट डिफ मडलिंग टेक्निक्स इन भेरिलक इन प्रिभिया क्लस उ टक अबाउट द बेसिक्स इंटेक्स अफ भेरिलक एंड आई एम गोईंग टू डिसकस अबाउट मडलिंग डिजाइन इन भेरियस एबसट्रैक्शन लेवल इन टूडेज क्लस एगेन उ आर गोईंग टू फलो दिस पालनेतकर भेरिलक बुक फर दिस लेक्चर सो इफ यू लुक इन टू दिस वि एल एस आई डिजाइन फ्लो Uh, so you can develop your design in different abstraction level right so the primary abstraction levels are you can define your design uh, in transistor levels or you can uh, write your code very low code in gate level or you can write your code in uh, in higher level in rtl level register transfer level so and then uh, if you try to write your code in higher abstraction level say register transfer level then uh, it has to be converted into gate level and if you write your code into gate level that has to be converted into transistor level because finally you have this uh, transistors that is running in your chip the ic that you are going to obtain after fabrication is basically is a transistor level designs right so there are synthesis tool or electronic design automation tools which can does that job and usually it is uh, advisable that you develop your design at as abstract level as possible because if you try to develop your design in uh, say gate level there will be too many gates okay and your code will be too big there will be lot of connections so it's going to be difficult to manage uh, that detail level design whereas if you go little bit a uh, little bit higher abstraction level which is called register transfer level which i'm going to talk about today so then you don't need to specify explicitly all get their interconnections and not right you can just write an expression that say a plus b plus c instead of uh, designing a full adder uh, or uh, to develop this plus operations and make the connections and all right so that's the give the advantage but uh, from a language perspective when you learn a language you should know what uh, if i try to you have to model your design say in transistor level or get level Uh, how do you model that right so you should know the language uh, uh, language features how to model these things in uh, transistor level uh, get level or higher level okay so in today's class as well as in next class i am going to talk about uh, this modeling design in different abstraction level okay so here i just uh, take the eda flow the conventional eda flow that i have that uh, usually followed in the industry uh, for very large scale integration Uh, that means the having a chip which has million of transistors as i mentioned there are three primary level register transfer level then you have gate level and you have kind of transistor level here okay which is uh, transistor level so you can develop your design in this level in the gate level or in the transistor level and as i mentioned there are synthesis tool that can convert this things into get level and whenever you do this uh, course, and this tool is called logic synthesis tool right and you will see uh, there are uh, this uh, there are many synthesis tool available commercially and academically available which can take a rtl design in verilog and convert into automatically into a get level design into uh, in verilog okay similarly there are tool that can take a get level design and give you a transistor level design which is called physical synthesis which is basically is this right which, which consists of pro planning placement routing okay so this is basically physical synthesis even you can write your code in c which is behavioral description c c++ and there are tool which can convert it into rtl uh, which is called high level synthesis tool but that's not something uh, scope of this uh, course uh, there are course developed uh, by even by me which actually talks about this the course name is cbs plsi design so you can if you are interested you can also look into that part that how we can get a hardware in rtl from c++ automatically okay but uh, in today's class i'm going to talk about if you try to develop a design in transistor level or get level or rtl level how verilog supports that so as i mentioned you have different abstraction level in your design and you can uh, develop the things in different abstraction level like uh, sw uh, switching level get level and this data flow and behavioral modeling combining to it's called 
RTL. Okay, this is register transfer level. So whenever you try to develop something in register transfer level, you have to use the both convention of behavioral modeling and data flow modeling. Okay, and as I mentioned, so I, whenever so this is the most abstract level. Right, this is the most abstract level. and this is the most de detailed level right in the sense uh, if you have probably say uh, uh, say 1000 line of code in rtl that may become 1 lakh line of code in suzy level right so it's easy to develop things in higher abstraction level so, I am going to talk about uh, the Verilog syntax in different levels. So, first I am going to talk about in switching level, right. So, in in so in the hardware effectively you have transistors, right and which is basically CMOS, PMOS and NMOS, right metal oxide semiconductors. So, which is effectively uh, worked like a switch, although there is electrical characteristics, I am not going to detail that part, I am to abstract out. So, usually this uh, MOS is nothing but a switch, right. So, it is basically works as a on and off. If uh, for certain uh, way uh, you can make it on, that means the current will flow, otherwise it, uh, it is off, that means the current will not flow, right. So, and you have uh, this uh, P MOS and N MOS, usually in the metal oxide, there are widely used these things are P MOS and C MOS. Again, I am not going to PMOS and NMOS. I am not going to going much detail on that because I am just briefly try to cover how to model a design in Verilog at switching level, right? So this is basically a PMOS and this is a NMOS. Okay. So how does it work? So it's basically you have a connection like so it looks like this, right? So basically here what I connected that they connect the VDD, the voltage, the current source, right. So usually it is a 5 volt or something. And there is, uh, so if it is a P MOS there will be a not here. So you have VDD here, right. And then if you uh, give say 1, what will happen? Because of there is a negation, they, it will become 0, right. So when it is 0 that means this is open, right. This uh, gate is open. And as a result, the current won't flow, right? So this, uh, so the positive voltage you can think about one, uh, which I can uh, make out as one. So this one won't flow here because this is open, the gate is open, so you'll get zero here, right? Similarly, uh, if you have a N MOS, it just work opposite to this, right? So here, uh, suppose, uh, so if you give say zero here, so similarly, if you give zero here it will become 1 and it will make get close and then you will receive 1 here, right. So, it is basically uh, complement the value, right. If you give 1, you will get 0 at this point and if you give 0, you will get 1 at this point, right. So, similarly here, what is happening? Uh, if, uh, if you give 1, so it will become close, right. Whatever the value here, it will pass and if you give, uh, so if it is VDD, so if you give 1, output will 1. If you give 0 at the gate, so then this is open and your uh, this is it will not contact, it will get 0. So, it is exactly past this. So, what I am doing here, here I try to define a NOT gate using transistors. Okay. So, what I am doing here, I am just connecting the VDD here and this is my PMOS, this is my NMOS and I am cutting the source X here, X is my input. right? So, my expected BR is that X and my output is if I give 1, I will give 0. If I give 0, I will get 1, right. So, now if I give 1 here, what is happen? What will happen? So, this will become 0, this is it will not conduct, but since I am giving 1 here, this is close, right. So, and this is connected to the ground, it is kind of 0, right, and this is basically 1. So, that means it is conducting, so I am going to get this value here, right, I am going to get 0. So, 1, I will get 0. If you give 0 here, now, since this is 0, so this is open, right. So, this 0 won't pass here. Whereas, because I have given 0 here, this is a not, uh, so there is a uh, the PMOS, this will be closed and this 1 will come here and I am going to get that voltage here. So, I am going to get this not PMOS. So, this just illustrate you can actually design any Boolean gates, AND gate, OR gate, NOT gate, XOR, any, any gates 
using these transistors in different combinations. Okay? I just discussed about a NOT gate. So, effectively in the gate level, this is nothing but a NOT gate. So, in Verilog, you have all these uh, keywords, right? So, PMOS, NMOS, these are already there. It is a kind of a kind of in the language already supports that. Okay? So, to make this connection, what you have to do now? You can just you have to just make the connections. Right? So, you de declare a module which is a NOT gate, the input is X and output is F. So, I just declare uh, the module and I declare the types uh, or define what is input, what is output for this module and then you need uh, these two internal declaration and which is VDD and ground. This is also uh, inbuilt in the language. So, you can just supply, supply 1 is VDD and then supply 0 is 0. Right? So, it is basically it is supplying 0 or 1. So, I just name this as GND right? and then I have to make the connections. So, for PMOS, so this is the output. right? So, you just connect VDD here, X here and this is the output. So, this is F and for this F is connected, this is F and this is X. So, your ground is this, right. So, you are connecting uh, ground here, basically here you are connecting ground and F is the output here, right. So, this is how you just make the connections. So, if you just write this code and if you simulate, it will exactly behave like a NOT gate. So, this is just uh, illustrate how you can define a switch level uh, circuit in Verilog, but you will rarely going to do this right? because nobody write code in transistor level, it is just define NOT gate because in the if you go to the gate level modeling, the Verilog language already supports all these Boolean gates, right? you can just simply write NOT of something. right? So, if you just declare NOT and then it just give you the inversion right so it will just uh, uh, if you give x it will make you it will give you x bar right so you already have this inbuilt uh, or built in get level primitives right so and or x or buffer buffer is just the x equal to x just uh, repeat the value right and there are many others right so how do you declare them so you just declare which of the primitive you want to use and or not anything the delay I will talk about, usually this delay is not synthesizable. So, if you want to develop a integrated circuit or IC uh, for your design, you never should use this delay in your code. Okay? The delay is very useful for developing test bench. So, when you write a big design, you have to synthesize your design. Right? You have to test your design whether it is functionally correct or not. So, for that what we usually do, we give uh, some input and check whether the output is matching with my expected output. So, in that case, so suppose you want to run it for 1000 uh, possible test cases and then you have to give one test case and you have to wait for some time, delay it for some time, say for 10 unit of time, then I will give the next input. Right? So, this is what you can control that by this delay value, but when you synthesize, uh, it, it, there should not be any delay in your design. Okay? You must remember that. Uh, and then you give the name of your design and then this is the port list and you, you need to know uh, this particular exactly what is the port order and accordingly you have to give the value. right? So, for example, if you declare a AND gate, so if I just I use the primitive AND, this is the my AND gate name A1, this is my OUT and two inputs is input 1 and input 2. right? So, you, in the gate table modeling, instead of doing this transistor level modeling, I am simply going to use the NOT gate, that the NOT gate that I have uh, in the in my primitive in the gate level. Okay? So, let me take an example. So, suppose now you want to develop this circuit. right? So, there is a AND gate, there is a NOT gate and there is a OR gate and I am to make the connection like this. So, in my case, my input is ABC and output is XY. Right? So, now I will declare that is a module, simple circuit. Suppose I give the name as simple circuit and my port list and then I declare which is my input. So, ABC is my input as shown here, output is XY as shown here. Right? and you need some internal wire sometimes. So, here E is the internal wire. So, I declare all the kind of variables I need uh, to define this module right? and then I have to make the connections. So, I will just say G1 is my AND gate. So, AND G1. So, this is my primitive name. This say that this will be an AND gate. G1 will be an AND gate and this is the port list. As I mentioned, this is my output and these are the two inputs. right? So, as you see here in A, 
AND gate A and B is the input. So, I just put these other two in, in, in inputs and the output is E. So, it will basically make these connections. Then the NOT gate is simply, uh, so this is G2 is a NOT gate, input is C, output is Y, right. So, I will just say YC, okay. Simply and then the third is OR gates, the input is this Y, this is basically Y, right. This Y name is Y, so this is also Y. So, this is basically for this OR gate, the primitive is OR, the name is G3, and input is Y and E, Y and E, and output is X, and then N module. If you just write this, and if you give A, B, C, you are going to get X and Y based on this interconnections. You can try for, so for A, B, C, uh, it is a Boolean value, so you can have 8 possible values, and you can test whether your circuit is working correctly or not by all possible giving all possible input values and you can know the expected or the desired x y value and you can just check whether your circuit is working correctly right. So, this is what uh, the gate level modeling where you explicitly define the gates or instantiate the gates because these are the modules primitive modules and you are instantiating g 1 g 2. So, you are effectively using one and gate one or gate one not gate right and you are in inherently making the interconnections in detail level by the port list. So, this is actually making the interconnection as well, right. So, this is how you are going to model in gate level. So, if I uh, give one more example of a say multiplexer, so which I will cover again in detail. Uh, the behavior is like this multiplexer is that it is basically if you think about multiplexer is uh, say for a 4 is to 1 multiplexer. There are 4 inputs, right? I0, I1, I2, and I3, and there is one output Y, and it has to select line, right? So, basically S0 and S1. So, that S0 and S1 can have 4 values 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, and corresponding. So, when it is 0, 0, I am going to select Y0. Okay. If it is 0 1, I am going to pass this I 1 to output. If it is 1 0, I will pass I 2 uh, and if it is 1 1, I 3. So, this is the behavior, right. So, effectively uh, if you try to design this in gate level, this will be the circuit and if you understand this, so it is basically say this is S 1, this is not gate. So, it is basically S bar, right and this is S 0, this is not gate. So, effectively you are coming here. 0 0 right. So, whenever it, this is 0 0 this will become 1 1. So, this is AND gate and then 1 is uh, so I whatever the value of I that will be my output right. So, that means it is passing I 0 here and uh, similarly here I am connecting uh, 0 1 here 1 0 and this is 1 1. Basically, I am connecting S 1 you can see here S 1 is connected here and S 0 is connected here. Right. So, whenever a both are is 1, so then in that time and get output will be y 3 equal to i 3, whatever the value of i 3 that will pass to the output, right. So, this way I can de declare, so this is my interconnections, I am going to talk about this in much detail in the coming weeks. So, uh, for the time being we just move focus mostly on the implementation aspect. So, this is my marks, if, if, if I know this is the connections, so I declared a module marks 4 is 2 on marks. You declare the port list. So, the port uh, there are 4 plus i 0, i 1, i 2 and i 3 and there are 2 select line s 0 and s 1. So, these are the 2 select and y is output. So, I declared that right. So, this input is i 0, i 1, i 2, i 3, s 1, s 0 and output is y and you need the intermediate connection specifically this this value. So, not value right. So, I just declared this not of this and this and also you need to declare these wires right all the wire you have to declare other you are not able to make the connections. So, I declare this y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3 ok. So, let me just clean little bit ok. So, now I have declared all the wires and I have to just make the connections now right. So, I first make this not get it is basically not of s 1 equal to I will just put a not get right. So, this is my n 0 and n 1. So, this n 0 I say this is my I have a one instance of a not get which is n 0 output is not s 0 wire. So, this is the not s 0 wire and input is s 0 the input is s 0 right. So, this is how I make this connection. So, now s 0 will come and output will be not s 0. Similarly, I make for this s 1 that s 1 is input and not s 1 is a negation of the 
negation of this S1 value because it is a not get right. So, I make this to not get now I have to define this for and get and it is pretty easy. So, for A0 I0 is coming not of S0 is coming not of S1 is coming right. So, for A0 so I have a instance of and get A0 which has input is I0 not of S1 not of S0 and output is Y0. Right. Similarly, I define A1, I define A2, I define A3. So, I have 4 AND gates, I instantiated 4 AND gates. The only thing is left is uh, instantiation of this OR gate. So, what uh, which I done here? So, I just say this is OR gate, A4 is OR gate and input is Y0, Y1, Y2 and Y3. So, I just make this and my output is Y. So, this is and then N module. So, this is my get level description of this multiplexers ok. I hope you understand this. So, this way uh, you can actually develop any design in get level you just need to know these connections you have to give name of each uh, um, each get and each wire and you have to make the connection like this just instantiate the uh, desired get and put the port list such as that your interconnection become automatic right you can automatically make the interconnections ok. I hope this is clear. So, now I will take one more example of get level design and I want to emphasize specifically that hierarchical design concept that I introduced in the last class that in hardware you are not always going to make a, a flat connection like this ok. You are going to make a hierarchical design and this uh, full adder is a very nice example for this ok. Suppose for, uh, your objective is to add two numbers uh, say 4 bit number right 4 bit number uh, A and B ok. You have A and B you want to add them ok and you can have a carry in ok C0 which is means initially you can have some carry but these are say 4 bit. And I want to make adder right I want to do basically A plus B plus C and this will be my out right and the output will be 4 bit right. So, there will be sum which is again 4 bit and there will be carry out which is again 1 bit ok. This is also 1 bit this is 4 bit this is also 4 bit right. So, now how I do this hierarchically. So, what I will do I will first declare a half adder ok half adder which is basically takes two value say some two bit it is not four bit right it is a single bit. So, suppose it is take a and b it can have four value 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and output is basically a sum 0 and carry out ok. It means that if you just add two 0 your output will be 0 and there is no carry if you add 0 and 1 so output will be 1 and there is no carry if you add 1 and 0 output will be 1 there is no carry if you add 2 1 1 so it out value will be 2 right which is 1 0 so this is 1 plus 1 right in boolean so output will be 1 0 so the out so i'll sum will be 0 and carry will be 1 okay so that means if you have a single bit output it cannot hold the uh, addition value so you there is a overflow and that is what is carry out okay so, I will first uh, develop a uh, get level design for this ok. So, which is uh, very simple you see here whenever it is 0 1 1 0 output is 1 whenever it is 0 0 or 1 1 output some output is 0. So, it is nothing but a XOR gate right. So, I can just put a XOR gate where I can put A and B right and what I am seeing only when the carry out is 1 only when this is 1. So, I can just put a AND gate and put them here. So, this is my S0 and this is C1, this is my half adder right. So, I first develop a simple module which is half adder doing this ok. Then what I am going to do you can have a carry in also to this right. So, if you think about that so you have now A, B and there is a carry uh, in ok. So, let me just go back and see how I have developed this half adder. So, this is my half adder ok. So, and I can write the half adder code just like this. So, I have a module half adder 
where your input is SC and this XY is basically your input right. I have used uh, AB but it, this AB is nothing but XY okay you, you can think about this AB uh, corresponding to my previous diagram okay. So, I just declare this x y is my input and output is sum and carry and I have a xor gate where I just put x y output is sum, I have a and gate. So, it is basically this is my half header right. So, I have a and gate where I put x y and output is c. So, this is my n module. So, this is my half header module that I have this, uh, developed first. Then I am just think about what is full adder right. So, now I am going to talk about uh, how I can develop a full adder. Full adder means what? You can have two values, two binary values A and B, but there can be carry in. For example, here there is a carry uh, in some case you have a carry out and that can feed into some next block, right. So, in some case you in a full adder you can also have some carry values. So, you have to develop a, a full adder which effectively um, uh, can have a carry value as well, right, carry input as well, okay. So, you can have now, now again four values and in this case your carry is 0 and you can again have these 4 values and in this case your carry value is 1 right. So, this is the 8 possible cases now and you can make your uh, sum and carry out this is carry in similar way right. So, it is basically you are adding 3 bits. So, this is 0 so because you are adding all 3 0. So, this is 0 0 if you add these 3 bits it will be output will be 1 and no carry if you add these 3 bits it is 1 right 0 plus 1 plus 0 this is 1 and output carry is 0. If you add this this is 2 right. So, this is 1 0 right. If you add this it will be 1. So, 1 0 sum is 1 and this is 0 and then if you add this this is 2 right 0 1 plus 0 plus 1. So, 2 this is 1 0. If you add this again it is 2 1 0 and if you add this this is become 3 right which is 1 1. Uh, so, I can just uh, think about this 1 1 1 and 1 in this cases my output is bit will be 1 right and if you just explore these cases it is basically uh, it is saying that you have only. So, uh, there are uh, here there is 1 there is 1 in this case you have only 1 and uh, in this case you have 3. So, you, you can have basically odd number of 1 right. So, here there is only 1 1 uh, here also there is only 1 1 in this case also this is only 1 1. So, this is the odd number of 1s basically. So, now uh, I can represent this like this you have to just make sure that you have odd number of 1 for this right. So, I can just represent this like this that I have 1 half adder where I just see. So, XOR gate is actually just check whether it is a odd number of 1 or not right. So, it will just and I make this connection. So, this is my A and B. So, I will just the output will be 1 whenever it is 0 1 1 0. So, basically it has odd number of 1 right. Now, this is my carry right. So, now I will put one more XOR gate. So, if this is 1 and this is also 1 then it will become even. So, you will get 0 right. If one of them is 0 and one of them is 1 then I will get 1 here. So, effectively if you just club this XOR and this XOR uh, which is basically checking whether um, there is a odd number of 1 in your uh, this a b and c. So, this will be my sum right. So, this is how I uh, understand my s and this is I, I can calculate the s here ok. And similarly when you carry out is 1 whenever you have more than uh, I think uh, so carry out is whenever at least 2 right. So, output is carry out is there are 2 okay, so at least 2 2 3. So, you have at least 2 1 right. So, how I can do that? I can just check here. So, if both of them is 1. So, this is 2 1 here then my output will be 1 because this coming to a OR gate. So, if this both of them is 1 I my output will be 1 carry out will be 1 and if uh, if this come that means one of them is 1 right. So, this will be 1 only if one of them is 1 and then I am going to check with the other input. So, it says that this if this output will be 1 if this is 1 and one of them is 1 again this will become even right. So, uh, at least 2 right. So, in this case what will happen? So, your output will be 1 when at least you have uh, 2 ones among this a b c right. So, this is my a this is b and this is my x carry. So, this is how I can develop my full adder. Now, you see very nicely that this is nothing but 1 half adder right. This is nothing but this is 1 half adder 
this is nothing but another half error although I just develop separately but I, if I can visualize this way. So, now I can to develop a full adder I can instantiate two half adder and a orbit and that is enough right and that is exactly what I have done here. So, I have now x y z which is basically my a b and carry in and this is my carry out right in my uh, example in my example right this is my sum this is carry out and a b ok. So, I just say that this is my in my full adder uh, in my full adder x y z are my input sum and carry is my output and there are some internal wire you have to declare this this should be s 1 this should be d 1 and this should be d 2 ok. So, this is what the connections is. So, for the half adder 1 you are giving x y your output is s 1 and d 1 for half adder 2 your input is s 1 z s 1 and z. So, you have s 1 and z your output is s and d 2 right I make this connection like this and for or d 1 and d 2 your d 1 and d 2 is the input and output is c. So, by just connecting to half adder and or get uh, I create a full adder now this is my full adder ok. So, you can see the how I am hierarchically building this full adder. So, I first define what is my half adder a module to declare a full adder I just instantiate two half adders and or, or get ok. So, this is what uh, I am going to do, but my final objective was to do a 4 bit adder. So, what I can do now I can make the connection like this. So, I have one full adder. So, I have already defined a 1 bit full adder right. So, what I can do now this is my 1 bit full adder. So, I have two value now a and b which is I can think about this a 0, a 1, a 2 and a 3 and for b it is b 0 bit, b 1 bit, b 2 and b 3 right. So, this is basically the bits. So, I can do a full adder like this and you can have a carry 0. So, I can do this full adder with a 0, b 0 and c 0 and there will be carry carry out out of it right. So, there can be carry out for the full adder. Now, I can do a full adder of a 1, b 1, c 1 and it can have a carry out which can be c 2. Then I can do a full adder of a 2, b 2 and c 2 right and then it can have a carry out c 3 then I can do a 3, b 3 and c 3 this is exactly this design right. So, I do this a 0, b 0, c 0 output is 0 carry on is c 1 for the next full adder I am giving the bit 1 a 1 and b 1 my output will be s 1 bit this is my sum bit 1 and output will be c 2 carry output and this will be connected to this and this is a 2 b 2 this is a 3 b 3. So, now this is my I have a adder which is 4 bit it can add to 4 bit number right. To do this what I have to do I have to just instantiate 4 full adders in my design. So, this is my 4 bit full adder where my inputs are a b. So, you can think about in my design c 0 a b is the input right. So, here although I have just put a 0 b 0 it is basically a 4 bit right a 0 b 0 a and b is a 4 bit value c 0 is a single bit input right. So, a b and c is the inputs and output is s and uh, c 4 s is nothing but this s 0 s 1 s 2 and s 3 4 bits. So, it is a 4 bit output and c 4 is a single bit output right. So, now and the internal uh, wire you have to declare which is c 1 uh, this c 1 c 2 and c 3. So, once you are declare all these variables input and in internal wires you are ready to make the connections and I have just instantiated 4 full adder which is defined here. So, this is my full adder now I am instantiating 4 full adders right. So, f a 0, f a 1, f a 2 and f a 3 this is f a 0, f a 0 this is f a 1 this is f a 2 and this is f a 3 and how the connections are very simple right a 0, b 0 and c 0 output is c 1 s 0 for f a 1 it is a 1, b 1 and c 1 output is s 1 and c 2 exactly the way I declare and similar this for f a 2 it is a 2, b 2 and c 2 this, this is a c 2 and output is c 3, s 3 right which is this is s 2 right c 3 and s 2 and for the f a 3 it is a 3, b 3 and c 3 and output is basically s 3 which is basically s 3 and c 4. So, if you just do this and if you run this now you can add 4, 4 bit adders. So, this is very nice example of how you can actually do this uh, hierarchical development adder using module wise. So, just to summarize I declare half adder 
then I am going to use this half adder to declare a full adder and then I am going to use this full adder 4 times to declare a 4 bit adder. Okay. So, this is how uh, we can do designs at the get level. Okay. So, next I uh, will just move on and I will talk about the data flow modeling. So, in the data flow as I mentioned this is little bit more higher abstraction level. right? So, data flow plus behavioral modeling combined is RTL register transfer level. So, here I am going to use a keyword assign. So, if you see here you have to develop these things you need to know exactly the uh, connections names. Uh, everything right every variable name every wire so you need detailed level of modeling right and uh, when you have millions of gates writing making this interconnection is very tedious right so what i can do i can just uh, go a little bit abstract cell level i am not going to uh, use these gates but i can write an expression right i can simply write a and b right so sorry a and b so it will do the uh, a and B and the store result will be in source uh, uh, in a variable C. So, I can just say C equal to A and B. So, which is similar you just say and some A A 1 and then you are saying C A and B. It is exactly the same thing. So, you are basically you declare a and get output is C and input is A and B. Right. So, but I can also represent this in terms of this. The advantage here is that I can write a bigger expression as well. So, instead of this, this I can write A and B then or C, right? Say then say then say X or D, I can write a bigger expression and then that I can connect to some output X. So, to do this you have to make uh, declare uh, say uh, uh, instance a AND gate, then a OR gate, then a XOR gate and you have to make the exact connections. Here I do not have to bother about all these connections, I do not have to bother the internal wires, I just write the expression. Okay. This is little bit higher abstraction level, but do the same thing. Right. So, internally the synthesis tool will convert them into a get level design. So, we can use the assign statement and can I write the expression, Boolean expressions and so far I am talking about Boolean expression. Similarly, you can do it for uh, say if you have a scale vector value which is say 8 bit value or 16 bit value, you can do a plus b then it will be a 8 bit full adder instead of whatever you have done so far you do not need to do anything you can just write a plus b a plus b equal to c and if this is 8 bit this is 8 bit so this output will be 8 bit and they will be carry out right so it can define 9 bit also so then automatically it will create a 8 bit full adder so far i have declared a 4 bit full adder i can uh, just make a chain of connection like this i can make a 16 bit also right so uh, this is as simple as that just you just do a assign c equal to a plus b and you just make the data with correctly okay so this is what is called data flow modeling where i can represent my circuit little bit higher abstraction level where i'll not make uh, i can make a precise uh, expressions that define my behavior okay the syntax is like this assign then uh, some drive strength which you don't we usually do not use and there is a delay again you can just uh, mention how much uh, how much unit of time after that is going to happen and you would have the assignment expression but again as i mentioned this delay is uh, the things which are only use uh, for simulation but in actual circuit you will never use right so this is only for your writing test bench otherwise it is just assign assign then you just uh, write x equal to a plus b okay so for example here right you have wire out equal to var 1 and var 2 right so when this expression is going to be evaluated, it is very important to note this that whenever any of this value modify or change or gets updated, the automatically this out will be recalculated. Right? So, this expression is evaluated as soon as uh, one of the right hand side operands changes and the value is assigned to the left hand side. So, whenever this var1 or var2 changes, your output will also get updated. Right? That is what you want. There is important thing you must on. So, this is very important thing this assign this must be a wire. Okay. This cannot be reg. This left hand side cannot be reg, but the right hand side can be reg or wire all are allowed. Okay. So, this right hand side can be net or reg, but LHS must be net. I will talk about how to uh, update uh, the left hand side for reg in next class, but assign can only update a wire or a net not a reg 
okay that is very important so this is very important about this assign so uh, now if you think that multiplexer design that i have talked about the same multiplexer design i have taken so there i have instantiated not get there is a s0 s1 then i have instantiated four and get and then i instantiate one or get you remember that one right so if i just go back there this is the design right so i have instantiated four and get two not gets and one or get and make the exact precise connections right now if i develop this multiplexer in the data flow level it's much e pretty easy so what i just do i know my expression right so i know that this i0 i1 i0 i1 i2 i3 s0 s1 the input so is a, you can declare the mo module interface will be same right this i0 i1 i2 i3 and s0 s1 is the input and y is the output exactly this way and i'll write assign assign is what the expression of this right this is basically not s0 not s1 and i0 this is not s1 s0 and i1 this is s not s0 and i2 and this is s1 and s0 and i3 and there is a or and or of all all of them right so i just write a single expression of this entire design and if you write this automatically this will it will automatically it created the circuit like this because internally the synthesis will an analyze this and it will create this circuit but you don't need to instantiate individual and not get or or get right so this is what this data flow level ex expression of the multiplexers okay i hope you understand how is, is this to write in the data flow level instead of the get level just to uh, complete this uh, discussion that since the assign has a delay how it behaves it means that this particular expression is going to happen after 10 unit of time and how when this output this value changes whenever any of this input changes so whenever this in one or into change after 10 unit of time it will be reflected on the out right so this timing diagram shows that suppose uh, this is your in one and this is into so initially both are zero right so at this point say so it started from here right so this is a time unit zero so both are zero so your output should be zero but let's say it was uh, previous it was one so it will maintain one till this point after 10 unit of time this value becomes zero right although they both are zero here but it will reflect it after 10 unit of time now say at this 10 unit of time this both become one right but still my output is zero it will be updated after 10 unit of time at 30th right so your in one and into become one at 20th unit of time and output will become 1 at the 30th unit of time okay so this is how this goes and say in 60th out of time is this in 1 becomes 0 and since say and so output should be 0 but that will reflect at 7th unit of time so out will continue like this and at 17 unit of time this will become 0 and so on right but if you do not have this delay line then your i'll just show you how the out. So, suppose if instead of this if you write assign out equal to in 1 and in 2. So, since at this point of time both are 0 your output will also become 0 right and here it both become 1 out also will become 1 right and it will continue like this at this point since in becomes 0 out will also become 0. So, you can see here uh, out exactly following uh, the in in and in, into but here out is following the value of in 1 into but delayed by 10 unit of times okay so this is how this delay happen but I, I mentioned again this delay is going to be used for writing test bench which I am going to cover in one of the next uh, very long lecture but this will never be used in your actual hardware okay and uh, this uh, behavior level uh, uh, sorry data flow level all these operators are allowed uh, all the arithmetic operator like multiplication uh, division add subtraction modulus this you know the behavior so same thing uh, behaves here logical operation like and and or not relation operation like greater than less than less than equal to greater than equal to equality not equality everything so you can just check whether two values equal or not greater than less than right and logical is basically they just check whether and and is a relation operator right and then you can also have bitwise operation so this and 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 is different right and and is just checking whether say suppose your a and b right so you 
this is compare whether both of them is 1 right and this is just the b twice operation right. So, for example, suppose you have uh, 1 1 0 0 and your b is 0 0 1 1 if you do a and and b it is basically they are not same right. So, it is basically 0, but if you do a and of this the board output will be 0 because all zeros right. So, it is a bit wise thing. So, I will suggest you cross check uh, all the bit in from books. Similarly, you have a reduction which is uh, on the single value right this is on one input it just check if it is a 1 1 it will just do a this bit and this bit this bit and this bit only it will be return 1 if all of them 1 right and for a or it will return if one of the bit is 1 right this is for the bits of a single variable and for this bit wise you have two operator. Similarly, you have a shift operator is a right shift or left shift and this is the shift for arithmetic values you can concat two values right. So, that I have explained in the previous class uh, if say a and b is this you can concat and it will get output will be 10, 8 bit because this is 4 bit and 4 bit and the value will be concatenated accordingly. The replication is that you want to replicate one value how many times if you write 4 then a like this then since a is 4 bit it will replicate 4 times. So, the output will be 16 bit and the value will be 1100 and so on right and the conditional is the ternary operator. So, I will uh, strongly suggest you to uh, follow some books to get the exact meaning uh, it is pretty easy right. Uh, and with this I uh, conclude today's class and in the next class I am going to talk about the behavioral modeling. Thank you.